I get it, not everyone is fortunate enough to almost die like me, but even the less fortunate can pretend that they have. My name is Andrew Perlott and I want to talk about death, not to be morbid, but because it will make your day a lot better. The Roman emperor and philosopher Marcus Aurelius wrote to himself, think of yourself as dead, you have lived your life, now go and take what's left of it and live it properly. He was conducting a spiritual exercise in his journal, part of a millennia-long tradition stretching from Europe to Asia that recognized that death can reframe life and help bring it meaning and poignancy. Today, death is shushed, medicalized, and pushed into the corner. We don't want to think about it. This is a mistake, and modern research has shown that thinking about our own death grounds us and makes us better people. This study compared the blog posts of those dying of cancer or ALS with those asked to imagine they were dying of those conditions. Those actually dying had far more positive and far fewer negative things to say about the experience than those who were asked to pretend, which should make us question our assumption about dying. But what's more interesting is that those who imagined they were dying told the researchers that the experience was therapeutic, not anxiety producing. After living through a California earthquake that killed several dozen people, a number of survivors of the earthquake who reflected on their own brush with death reported a shift away from extrinsic goals like earning money, acquiring possessions, and having people like them, and towards intrinsic ones like maintaining close relationships with family members and seeking to accomplish what they personally found meaningful. And thinking about our own mortality may actually help us perform better. Firefighters risk their own deaths every day and frequently see people dying in fires and accidents. Some research has found that this stress leads to degraded job performance, but when asked to reflect on death logically and deeply, firefighters become more safety conscious, conscious of the pro-social aspect of their career and concerned with the welfare of others. For most of us, a single brush with death or just a single attempt at thinking about our demise won't lead to any long-term improvements in happiness or shifts in our outlook on life. It takes regular bouts of cognitive reframing to make that shift happen. I'd like to explore three specific ways we can do that, but first I wanna tell you about something that happened to me in October of 2015. I was deep asleep in bed around 7.30 a.m. when the back wall of the guest house I was staying in collapsed over me. I pushed the wall, broken bits of wall off me, and I threw my legs over the side of the bed and splashed down into calf deep water that was rising very rapidly. And it kept rising and it kept rising until a minute or so later, I was treading water with the water up to here and the ceiling around here and it just kept getting higher and higher. See the small building through the window? That's where I was. I thought either the rest of this guest house is gonna collapse on me, the water's gonna rise and I'm gonna drown, or I'm gonna throw myself out the window in order to escape drowning and probably drown out there because the water is filled with entire tree trunks going by. But that didn't actually happen. The house didn't collapse. The water stopped rising when there is like this much space between me and the ceiling. And after a few hours of treading cold water, firefighters came by in a pontoon boat and rescued me. For several weeks after that happened, I was deliriously grateful to be alive. Life seemed kind of surreal. The little things in my life, like a warm bed, a place to sleep, the ability to go for a walk and to see friends seemed like unimaginable gifts that had been bestowed upon me. That did not last. I very quickly returned to baseline, but I was aware enough of this process to know that like, this was a step down, that my life was better when I had the gratitude of being alive. And I remembered something because I had been studying Stoic philosophy since I had been a teenager and I had made several attempts to use what the Stoics called memento mori or a remembrance of death in order to reframe my life and improve my mood and become grateful for things. And so I decided that this time I wasn't going to go back to my baseline. I was going to make an effort to think about death every day. As morbid as that sounds, I was going to think about death and I was gonna be better for it. All it really took was a couple minutes a day and that feeling of gratitude, that feeling of 
being more alive and in tune with what was going on, that started to come back. Maybe it wasn't as intense as when I had almost actually died, but it was pretty close. So let's talk about three specific applications. You know that Ram Das quote, if you think you're enlightened, go spend a week with your parents. I think that truer words have probably rarely been spoken. Whether it's your family or other people in your life, there are some people who just get under your skin. If you haven't cut them out of your life completely, it probably means that you love them and value them on some level. And so it's worth asking yourself, every time you're about to lose your temper, to get irritable, to get snappy, whether you want that to be the frame through which you have your last interaction with that person, because it may well very be your last interaction with that person. Even if you don't die, your family and friends will, often before you are ready for them to die, as I know from good experience. And those that don't die still decline and change and their circumstances change. You will one day have your last visit to your childhood home with your parents. You will one day have your last meal with a sibling. You will have a last chance to talk to your friend on the phone. When dealing with people who get under my skin, who I do value and have a history with, one of the things that has helped me immensely is very simply to remind myself of the finite nature of our relationship, that this may be the last time I see them and how much I value things about them, how much I value the love that they've given me, the perhaps the material support, perhaps whatever uh, guidance or, or knowledge or whatever that they've shared with me and that this may be the last time I see them. And when I do this, I cannot help but immediately look on them with more love to not be irritated with them and to just withstand whatever annoying personal habits they have with so much more calm. So if I don't want my last connection with this person to be filled with bickering and irritation, I had better hold my tongue. But honestly, you don't even really need to hold your tongue because if you do this exercise, you should be filled with love and appreciation for that person, which will lessen your interest in reacting to whatever they're personal habit. I accept their quirks with a smile and our time together is peaceful. My father died young before I was ready for him to die, certainly. I think about how much time I wasted, not because I didn't spend time with him, because I did, but because when I was having those encounters, I always assumed that, that there would be always more time. I could always go and visit another time and I could let myself get distracted. I could let myself not be grateful for the impact he had on my life. I wish I had done it differently, and so now I do my best to do it differently every time I'm with somebody that I care about. So just remember, today may be the last time you see this person. If you love them, keep that in mind. Part two, gratitude. Gratitude is one of those things we hear a lot about, but it's hard in practice. The research shows that if you can be grateful, if you can express gratitude in your life, that you will be physically and psychologically more healthful, but it is not always easy to be grateful. And when I in the past have attempted to make gratitude lists, very often I can name a whole bunch of stuff that I am theoretically grateful for, but there isn't necessarily an emotion in me which coincides with the writing on the paper. But I have found that memento mori works a lot because whether we're talking about people or things, the general theme of loss and change and decay and that you will never have the same experience that you're having right now and so you might as well cherish it. Uh, if you bring that into your gratitude attempt, it becomes so much richer. If you have a car that's kind of junky, but you realize how much harder life would be if you had no car at all and getting around in America, you can kind of see how that might work. Your home may be shabby, but it is still shelter for you and still something to be grateful for. Those people who have done so much for you may disappear tomorrow. If you have a romantic partner who you've been with for a while, the newness of the relationship has worn off and it is easy to start to take them for granted. But if you remember how much that they do for you, the little things, the way they show love, when I think about that loss of, of all these things, my heart swells with gratitude. And I feel that and I carry that into my day. 
there are several times when I've done this exercise and I've immediately got up and it had to express gratitude, whether it's sending a text message or making a call or going to the other room and telling someone something. It makes you realize how negligent you've been and how much you've been just failing to really express gratitude for the great things in your life. You live as if you were destined to live forever, the philosopher Seneca said. No thought of your frailty ever enters your head. Of how much time has already gone by, you take no heed. You squander time as if you drew from a full, abundant supply, though all the while that day which you bestow on some person or thing is perhaps your last. Death may be the best thing in life, and if we didn't have it, we might want to invent it to keep our heads screwed on straight. Let death jolt you out of your reverie and help you to stop living as if you're never going to die. Because most people, although they'll cognitively admit, yes, I will one day die, they do not live as if their time on this planet is finite. You've probably heard the advice, what would you do if you were going to die tomorrow? What would you do if you're going to die next week? This frame is not especially useful, but I find the frame of what would you do if you were going to die in five years to be useful because it's still enough time that you would still have to work, you would still have to earn money to survive, but at the same time, five years is enough time to do a lot of things. It's enough time to write a book, to invent some new thing to help mankind, to launch a political crusade, to do any number of things to, to, for your own life, for the lives of those around you, for your world. And reframing in that way, if you have only those five years, are you gonna take a high paying prestigious job that makes you not spend any time with your family because you're so busy? Would you be getting drunk or doing drugs on the weekends knowing that you don't have all that many weekends left? How many times during those five years would you visit your family or call your friends? Ultimately, this is just a clarifying exercise, but it can help you see that you may be making decisions that are for the person that is going to live forever. And you are not going to live forever. You don't know how much time you have. You should think long term, you should save for retirement or do all those things. But at the same time, you should assume that there's a good possibility that you will, like my father, not get to live to see retirement. You never know what's gonna happen. These ideas will only make a major impact if you make the awareness of death and the, the transience of life a constant part of your day-to-day -day existence. There are a number of ways to do this, often just sitting down for a minute and thinking about the way that things are fading away and changing and how the people in your life may not be there much longer can cause an immediate shift into appreciation and gratitude. That's one simple way to do it. But journaling is also a powerful and more organized form that a lot of people enjoy. As you go about your life, if you have people you love who are sometimes irritating, simply seeing them and go, this might be the last time, this might be the last time before you show up or, or when you're starting to lose your temper, it tends to cause an immediate reframe. If you truly love this person and want them in your life, it will likely cause you to be a lot more forgiving. Some people will put memento mori calendars on their wall and mark off their days based on their average lifespan. Some people will get memento mori tattoos on their arms so they see it every day. Whatever your strategy is, make it a regular part of your life. As Marcus Aurelius said, you can leave life right now. Let that determine what you say and do and think.